Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Yesterday I released two videos about installing OpenRGB 0.7 along with the FX plugin. I, the first video was on Windows, the second was on Linux. Now this is going to be the third video in that series, installing OpenRGB 0.7 on Mac OS. Because I'm using a Mac Mini M1 here, I'm using going to install the ARM version of OpenRGB for Mac OS but we also provide macOS Intel builds for older Macs. And so the first thing we're going to do is just open up Firefox and go to openrgb.org. Same as we've done before. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page to where it says download OpenRGB 0.7 stable. And we will get the macOS Apple Silicon ARM64 version. And we'll just go ahead and let that open with archive, archive Utility, which should automatically extract it. And so here we go in our Downloads folder. We have OpenRGB, which has already been extracted, and then the zip file where it came from. So we're just going to go ahead and drag the application OpenRGB into our Applications folder and drop it there. So now it's installed. So we can go ahead and close out of Firefox. And then let's go ahead and open OpenRGB. So we'll just double click on that. Now, because I'm using my own signing key to build this, it's building on my own personal Mac uh, for the releases, um, it's not signed in a way that Mac is going to allow it. It's not on the App Store. So it's going to prompt you with this warning. Just go ahead and click Open. And it should open up and detect your devices. Now. On my setup here, let me just switch to the camera. You can see that I have my keyboard, which is uh, AK33 by Ajaz. And this is one that I've installed Sonic's QMK on, if you've seen my previous videos on that. And then I also have an LED strip behind my desk, which is powered by an Arduino Nano. And so these devices don't get automatically configured. So to set up the keyboard, I'm just going to go to the OpenRGB QMK protocol uh, settings tab here and click add. And we'll just call this um, Sonics QMK AK33. And then we have to provide the USB, VID, and PID of the keyboard. Um, so that is 0C45-5104. And we'll just save that. And then the other thing I have is my LED strip, which is driven by an Arduino Nano. Uh, I believe it is running TPM. No, I think it's Ada Light. Uh, we'll just go uh, LED strip. And we'll say, let's do LS dev grip TTY. And that should be. This one is the correct serial port for that. So dev tty dot usb serial dash two one one zero. Number of LEDs is thirty, and the baud rate is eleven fifteen two hundred. I want to say this is Ada Light, but I don't remember exactly. It's either Ada Light or TPM two. So we'll see if it works. So we'll close that out and do save here. So both of these are saved. So I'm going to close, actually, let's go ahead and keep this in dock just so that the link is there. And we'll close it out. And now we'll reopen it. And hopefully now it should detect all of our things. So we've detected, yep, the uh, Ada Light has started up. The AK33 is detected. And so if I go ahead and apply a color, we can see that everything has applied to red, we can go green, we can go blue. And so uh, just to verify, this is version 0 0.7. And we do have the plugins tab. So as we did on Windows and Linux, let's go ahead and install the effects plugin. So I'm just going to go over here and um, switch back to the regular scene. 
Sorry, I I had two monitors set up on the other computer so I could keep OBS off the screen, but I don't have two monitors set up on this one. So let's go for uh, HTTPS, open RGB, or no, gitlab.com slash open RGB developers slash open RGB effects plugin. And now here's the plugin, and just like yesterday, just like on Windows and Linux, we'll click the green check mark, which is the latest commit. And this time we will download macOS ARM64, and under Job Artifacts, we'll click Download. And then we'll let Archive Utility open this again because it also is a zip. And inside we have a .dylib, which is max version of a .dll file. So Windows is .dll, Linux is .so, and on Mac is .dylib. So let's go ahead and close these out and go into plugins and do install plugin. We'll go to downloads and select that file we just downloaded and open it. And so um, now we have the effects tab as we did yesterday on the other OS's. So let's go ahead and select Ra uh, Rainbow Wave, add it, select all of our devices. You can see here, I can go ahead and make that a little taller, move that off to the side. Let's bring the camera back up and we'll just go ahead and start. And so now you can see that our devices are reacting to the plugin. Uh, we can go ahead and try the visor effect that we also tried. And um, basically, yeah, all the same effects that we had used on the other operating systems should work just fine here on Mac. So let's go ahead and try shaders again. And we will pick crazy lines and we'll show the rendering and as you can see that's working just as it was on windows and linux so the only thing that i can say about mac is it doesn't we don't currently have a way built in to read back the audio that is currently playing so on like the audio visualizer which is a port of my keyboard visualizer program uh, we can start it and we can uh, select and actually, it's it's not even um, responding because it, it didn't request, I guess we don't have microphone permission. Mac is more strict about permissions, so it doesn't have access to the microphone right now, so it, it can't pick up my voice. But if you configure it properly, you can get it to do audio reactive, but it is more difficult on Mac than it is on the other two OSs. So, yeah, that is basically everything I wanted to share with you uh, regarding OpenRGB on Mac OS. Um, just kind of going through the installation process. I guess there's one last thing. On my Mac, it seemed like, especially after the update to the latest OS X version, it's just giving me that box that says open or show in Finder. Um, previously on Big Sur, I had the... Uh, problem where it wouldn't it would install and then it wouldn't even just let me open it would say go to security and then acknowledge it so I'd have to close it out then I would have to go into system preferences security and privacy and under general there would be uh, a box right here that I had to click to allow the software to run and that was kind of annoying so I'm glad it seems like they've done away with that but if it doesn't come up for you, that's where you would check. Uh, there would be a button right here to allow it. And then I had that button need to be clicked again after I installed the plugin. So I would open OpenRGB even after installing the plugin and the plugin wouldn't show up. I'd have to come in here and kind of allow the plugin and then restart OpenRGB and then it would work. So just, just something to keep in mind. So uh, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and close everything out and call it good. So thank you for watching this. And if you need to see um, the install process on Windows or Linux, 
I've uploaded videos for those as well. So thanks for watching.